everyone. Um, it's great to be in Cape Town. Um, I am here from Franklin Till uh, Studio to present to you uh, key trends that we have mapped out uh, for Caesar Stone um, that explore the cultural drivers that are shifting uh, the aesthetic design landscape in architecture, interiors, um, and product design. Franklin Till Studio is a multidisciplinary design studio bridging research, insight, and creative direction. Our key expertise is in trend forecasting, um, brand strategy, and um, we aim to create insightful, inspirational, and forward-thinking outputs that range from forecasting and insight reports for brands, um, publications, and um, bespoke editorials. Um, and we offer um, a package of exhibition and events curation. So my presentation today is going to um, show you the design inspirations that um, have um, filtered through to the Caesar Stone um, publication that you'll see today. Within this inaugural edition of Design Inspirations, we want to take you on a journey celebrating the creativity of the design world, leading you to a carefully curated selection of stones, materials encompassing current and future interior trends. We hope to provide you with inspiration, ideas, and information, showcasing how you can create these inspirational looks that stand the test of time using beautiful Caesar Stone surfaces from all four timeless collections, Classico, Supremo, Motivo, and Concerto. Providing a wealth of inspiration and insight, Design Inspirations showcases five key emerging interior design trends. Through careful curation of key lifestyle and product imagery, we identify the design cues, material finishes, um, and color palettes that form these significant design movements, highlighting the context and influences behind um, each trend. So our key five trends are soft minimal, revived grandeur, industrial luxe, nature invented, cultural remix. I'll start now with soft minimal. In an age of infinite consumption and mass-produced throwaway goods, consumers are paring down, cutting back and decluttering, creating room to breathe, to reflect and to consider our emotional connections to the everyday things that we've taken for granted. This trend is really born out of a consumer who's recession-weary, who is no longer um, interested in spending for spending's sake and is looking for a more emotional connection to um, their experiences and uh, products around them. Against this backdrop of intelligent simplification, the new design rule states that form follows emotion. So we have a mood board here that sort of shows aesthetically how this feels. It's calm, it's tranquil, um, and it's simplified. Simplicity becomes the new luxury. An example of this trend is in Starbucks' Expresso Journey, a pop-up shop by Nendo. And in this space, the customer is invited to browse nine different books that offer coffee, um, variants of coffee that the consumer can learn about uh, before trading in each book for um, a, a beverage. Um, the space is meant to be com contemplative, uh, it's meant to relax you, and it's a new way of, of buying and learning about the product. Home Living TV by Mike Chen is um, a product that's um, really in tune with uh, the need for our technology, actually, to become more reflective of our tastes uh, within this trend. So the TV has one remote control with one dial that takes you from one channel to the next. Um, and that's all it does. It's not complicated. And um, it's made with materials that are built to last and to age um, and not to feel like a box in the middle of your beautifully curated room. There is a new willingness to appreciate smaller and more subtle design cues. Um, so we see the feminine space um, articulated by soft, curvaceous uh, wall systems made warm by the blonde wood. This is seen here in you know, de Chaffaut's, um space that kind of typifies this trend. It's a calm, tranquil environment. Um, and it it offers um, a beautiful contrast in materials uh, from the upholstered to the harshness of the concrete, all tempered by the soft blonde wood. 
Similar to that is this juxtaposition of hard and soft seen here with uh, the warmth of the wood um, against the ceramics. And so the design context of the product is articulated by a devoidness of over-the-top de decoration. Soft minimalism is about creating an understated simplicity. The product elements of this um, trend are really driven by a nod, if you like, to mid-century design, something that is um, built to last, um, timeless, and can occupy any space, really, without uh, being uh, too in in intrusive. And we see the material application really bringing hard and soft elements, um, but with always with a dash of colour, um, a, a dash of pastels that make it really contemporary and new. So these material surfaces instigate this feeling of simplicity. They instigate the feeling of an emotional connection, actually, with the products around you. So suddenly um, we have tactile surfaces. Uh, we have that uh, juxtaposition between the concrete and the wood, the marble and the warmth of the wood. And we sort of see how these close um, apparitions create a really strong contemporary feel that um, is not sterile in the way that minimalism has been um, in time. Um, here it's incorporated with the Caesar Stone Frosty Carina, um, but with a very strong warmth uh, coming in from the handcrafted turned ball. In this interior, Frosty Carina has also been used, again highlighting the fact that it needs to be tempered to give it a new feeling with uh, natural materials. This soft marble finish gives it a real nice texture. So our colour palette is really soft. It's highlighted and accented with um, pastels, uh, pastels and mint, and in pink it feels really fresh, it feels new, it feels different. Um, it's uh, speckled with nougat um, and um, Caesar Stone Raven, offering that depth as well. You can sort of imagine these colours in different spaces, uh, these colour combinations. So revived grandeur, that's our next... Um, trend that we've put together, and it sees the luxury consumer move, to, move away from the fast-paced fashion-focused aesthetic we've seen dominating the past decade and towards a reconsidered sensibility that celebrates artisanal skills, tradition and heritage over the celebrity-driven excessive bling. And I think this trend is really a celebration of grandeur, um, of luxury, but we're seeing it articulated in clever ways, in um, sartorial ways. Revived grandeur places a greater emphasis on value, personal values, and redefines luxury in the context of workmanship and craftsmanship, the heritage of a brand um, and the experiences it can offer you. So Topman Personal Shopping is a really good example of this. Um, I have to say that this trend is really driven by designer Lee Broom um, using quite exuberant materials in novel ways. So parquet flooring is no longer seen on the floor. It becomes a wall feature. Uh, Buffet-style seating um, is covered in suede to give a luxurious feel, and suddenly the retail space is transformed. It's, it feels quite masculine, quite bold, boys' club, um, and this it really resonates with that group. We're seeing um, traditional brands collaborating with students uh, from different universities. This one is from ACAL, where they've taken cut crystal and taken this exuberance um, in cut crystal and turned it into a storage jar. Um, this is, I think, the ultimate storage jar. Um, but it's, it's playful. It's, it's not taking itself too seriously. So our interior design context feels very lush, but it's punctuated with heritage and tradition. There is a refound appreciation for tradition where the historic sits alongside the truly modern explores the notion of uh, heritage with new upholstery, heavy leathers with embellishments, but highlighted by a typically old mahogany. Um, and it also means that mahogany-based furniture that is uh, antique is having a resurgence when it's used in this way.
So our product design context leans towards the past, connecting with the future as manufacturers steeped in heritage and history harness the creativity of a new generation of designers. We're seeing really hard materials cut, uh, again using modern digital technologies uh, into novel shapes, things we couldn't achieve before, like the Inoki side table, which fuses really beautiful polished marble with what is essentially a hard plastic but shiny base. And it's these juxtapositions between the uh, value of the marble versus the plastic that makes this feel new and contemporary. It's not marble on marble. It's a combination of materials. Similarly, we've got Lee Broom again doing the de decanter light where he's taken cut crystal and turned it into light fittings. What should be reserved for the drinks cabinets is suddenly featuring as a light fitting and creating again that sense of uh, playfulness. Our materials and surfaces are reworked and refashioned, again using digital technologies like laser cutting and um, CNC milling. And we're able to create surfaces that are more novel, actually, as a result, um, but that are giving a warmth and a, a contrast to the hardness um, and the steelness of the um, copper and metallic finishes. Here we have the playful um, shining armor, Caesar stone, um, and that's sort of juxtaposed with the quarry lamp by Benjamin, Benjamin Hubert. Um, and he's using traditional techniques used in wood turning to turn marble to create a lighter feel to, to, to the material. Um, and I think what we are seeing is the tooling or the retooling of materials to make them feel contemporary and to reappropriate them in a way that um, 20 years ago would have felt um, very exuberant. There's a weight to the materials as well. It, it's luxurious, so it, it must be heavy. It's luxurious and heavy because it must be robust and last a longer time. So the kinds of purchases you see here are, are for a longer term view. Um, it's, it's not fast fashion as, as you would expect. So this interior fe features Caesar Stone Pietra Gray and it really feels masculine. We've got the blue there that's really highlighting the notion of heritage. It is a mixture of wood finishes and wood paneling. And so our color palette includes Empedaro chocolate truffle, shining armor, Piatra gray and London gray. And these are all accented with the bright blue Pantone 541 um, and apricot. And apricot is there to lift it and to make it feel um, quite quite strong, quite, um, quite light as well. I think the key thing with this trend is not to go too heavy. It's to mix um, the light pastels with the heavier stones like um, Emperado. So industrial lux is the next trend, and this is really driven um, in the same way as our first trend um, by the need for consumers to tap into uh, things that last forever. Industrial -like Lux highlights a new readiness to swap the glossy and aggressively marketed for the more rough-hewn and essential in product design, fashion, homewares and architecture. In tune with a more minimalist concern, Design Lux takes a solidly assured approach to utilitarian living. It is a trend that is heavily influenced by different shades of grey. It feels heavy with the weight of concrete, um, and we see a lot of brands tapping into that aesthetic. This is a store by Aesop where they have used material to make it look like a concrete that's, that floats um, on the floor, and we're seeing this in interiors um, to provide um, a more refined, accessible space, um, but one that feels like um, it could be there forever. The Espresso Solar Machine is cast in concrete, again, a nod to something that um, shouldn't break. Um, and we're seeing manufacturers take on a more um, bespoke uh, approach to making. So the concern isn't how do we mass produce this, it's how do we make something that um, people will like enough um, to, to, ta to take up. The design context of the interior is um, a utilitarian philosophy that speaks of honest, well-made functional products meant to stand the test of time. Our interior spaces here feature what feels to me as a Neolithic aesthetic, 
um, something that is almost primal in the appropriation of natural materials versus the strength of a concrete. Um, we see it in interior spaces that are being repurposed and uh, the utilitarian industrialism uh, being celebrated in that space. So people are not keen to cover this up and turn it into um, a flashy interior. It is about being sympathetic to its um, historical value and um, its, its integrity as a building. The Noma restaurant by Base Copenhagen is a really good example of this with pared down interiors that um, allow really the material to be honest um, and forthcoming about its properties. So the wood is not treated um, but um, chosen specifically for its color properties. Um, we're seeing polished concrete flooring um, alongside Japanese style um, seating interiors to provide that level of contemporary feel. Um, I think this is a trend that's been ticking over for quite some time now, but we're seeing it mature, we're seeing it become a bit more sophisticated. Um, and um, that softness is really highlighted here with the sheepskin. So our design context and product, the solidity of concrete and stone is balanced by delicate structures, curvaceous forms, or luxurious material details. Um, this is really um, in how this trend has matured, is we're seeing components being amalgamated and held together by a core um, other material. Um, so the table light by David Taylor is a really good example of this because it offers that combination of elements but brought together with the strong material line of the brass. The kami pots by Etla Ben offer concrete as a casting medium, so something we used to uh, associate more with clay, we're seeing being done with concrete. There's a real push to make it a more luxurious um, material uh, that offers a more luxurious product, and this is about how craftspeople are approaching um, the material development here. So the surfaces feel, like I said, quite Neolithic and multi-layered, I think. We've got different types of stones, but working within the same color construct, different shades of gray, underpinned um, by blues and sometimes by the warmth um, of, of yellow-based grays. Um, the trend is accented um, by strong copper metallics, um, and this is what makes it feel contemporary and different um, and, uh, and fairly new. The material surfaces highlighted here include the Caesar stone stripes, which I think offers a really subtle pattern gradient without being too over the top. Um, and I think once you start to combine the different types of stones, uh, from the matte to the more polished, um, you're getting a, a new depth of field there. I think that's what this is I'm sort of highlighting, the idea that the stone is used in, to provide light through re reflective properties, but also a calming, neutral mattiness that um, offers a different texture within that space. So our palette is largely grey in this space, but different shades of grey, and I think the trend really comes alive when you are able to layer them um, and to add the different greys as accents within an interior space. We've got accents of copper um, and um, sort of blues to, to highlight um, the contemporary playful feel to um, that trend. So our next trend is nature reinvented. And um, this really pays homage to the natural wonders of the world. Untethered nature is the inspiration for a beautifully raw design direction. In tune with the nascent creative concern for imperfection and sense of authenticity, designers emulate the colors, textures, and forms of the natural world. So the cultural context of this trend brings new unique textures and forms that are being emulated throughout the lifestyle sector. I think the biggest driver is the fact that more and more of us are living in cities and crave this connection to, to the natural and almost in a, in a world where design has been so homogenous, nature offers us a, a point of difference. Imperfection becomes um, a desirable um, a feature of, of um, design and um, the stranger something is, the more, um, the more quintessential it becomes. So we're seeing this trend emulated through fashion, interiors, design and even architecture. 
um, form of Phantasma's craft castle takes advantage of this by working with a combination of concretes, leathers, and suede, um, and animal uh, print leathers like snakeskin. Um, and this is offering a textural dimension that is unique um, because it's directly derived from nature. This bench by Alaya Serfati um, almost uh, is a signifier of biomimicry being a driver of this trend. So biomimicry is looking to biology and um, natural uh, processes to take design inspiration from them. And what looks almost like um, a piece of cloth that is alive um, is actually made through uh, craft work and um, felting. The exterior and interior environments adopt a raw, untamed aesthetic as designers and architects celebrate the raw power of natural geological formations. And I think it's this rawness, this openness of the true quality of a natural material that we're quite excited about. Hus One is a really good example of a piece of architecture that's blending with its environment and taking design cues in its material appropriation from the colors it's surrounded by. Truffle Holiday Home is another really beautiful example where they've built a concrete structure, filled it with soil, put hay on top of it, put more concrete on top of it, and then a cow eats the hay to reveal a new structure. Um, it's, it's, it's that real kind of um, fascination with how nature can be a part of our design process. How do you design with, with the natural and how do you make it sustainable? Um, how does this formation uh, feed a cow, I guess? <laughs> so the design context, uh, natural decomposition, corrosion and decay are being used as design tools to generate unique patterning and material finishes. We see this in the Cunning, Cunnington and Sanderson show where um, beautiful prints were made uh, of uh, natural processes in rusting. And um, what, what becomes quite intelligent in terms of how to use this trend is the ability to contrast the different colors and gradients to almost cr um, create um, a collage of natural elements. So it's not pretty daisies and flowers of a meadow, but it's taking those really contemporary cues and turning them into something that does look new and different. Similarly, Rain Tables by Andera Monjo is a really poetic example of this, where she actually uses rain to pattern the table surfaces before treating them. So again, it, she's designing with natural elements to create an emotive um, piece of furniture that is reflective of um, the process. So the materials and surfaces are randomized. They feel hand-drawn, handmade, and there is a digital um, input here from um, working with nat natural um, motifs and uh, making, them dif uh, making them new. Um, I think I said earlier that the imperfection is what makes them quintessentially natural. Blue Argate uh, from the Caesar Stone range really works within um, this trend um, because it's giving it a, a really strong exuberance. Um, it feels really luxury, but pared down by um, this appreciation of the unhewn rough surfaces. This interior features tiger eye and coca fudge, and coca fudge is almost that biomimicry type um, finish um, that looks like wood, but actually it's beautiful almost quartz-like amber stone. Um, it's reflecting the light and adding that um, luxurious dimension to um, what could have been quite a ster sterile space. So we have a, a range of different jewel colors within the palette. Um, and what's, what keeps this from being garish, actually, is the ability for um, palettes like Atlantic soap, um, salt to hold it together. Um, it subdues it um, in quite a um, contemporary way. The amethyst rock really is beautiful. And again, the um, Pantone Cool Grey 3 and uh, 615, those palettes are working in tandem with these jewel tones um, to create a look that um, isn't dated or won't date. Um, it's, it's a product that um, you sort of want to um, combine with different surfaces to make it feel contemporary and, and relevant. So the final trend we'll look at today is cultural remix. 
Um, cultural remix conveys a contemporary fusion of global design, a vibrant aesthetic direction fueled by a heady mix of cultural and semiotic references. I think a lot of this trend is coming from the fact that um, cities are borderless, uh, people are traveling from all over the world, um, and so our cultural identity is shifting. Um, we have a heritage, but we live in a space um, that is unique. So we see cultural remix celebrating the fusion of cultures with stylized tribal influences and the creation of a modern ethnic heritage. This trend is typified by Stephen Burks, who is an African-American artist who works really closely within an Afrocentric aesthetic, um, but is using incredibly contemporary design cues to make it um, hybrid, to make it relevant, um, and it feels um, global. It feels like it could actually exist anywhere. It is a celebration of all cultures. The Chandler Dressing Table by Doshi Levine for um, BC Barcelona is another really good example of this, where traditional Indian craft making skills um, are used with contemporary materials and surface finishes to produce something um, that who, something whose sort of heritage is quite difficult to um, determine from the outlook. So the interior feels stylized and mutated tribal and ethnic motifs celebrate cultural exchange whilst disrupting homogeneity. Uh, what's really special about this uh, trend is the fact that pretty much anything goes as long as it's well made. So um, this interior by Brazilian Rodrigo Almeida is such an example that offers a makeshift feel to the way that he assembles his materials. But the craftsmanship that's underpinning this is so strong that it does feel like luxury. Um, it's eclectic um, and it's combining a lot of different materials. What's difficult about this, making this trend work is balancing um, these elements so that they work together. Um, but first and foremost, uh, the mishmash is what is celebrated here. We see cultural motifs entering a really pristine environment that is very contemporary, and this reappropriation or appropriation of such motifs almost blend into the background because of the context. Cultural remix incorporates traditional indigenous craft techniques, unexpected tactile experiences, and a sense of expressive optimism. It is a really fun design trend, actually. Um, but what, what is key to it is that redefinition of um, cultural techniques. We see this here by craft-oriented design, and they've taken traditional Pakistani-type hand weaving and produced quite a bold collection of um, chairs that feel like something we haven't seen yet, but um, instinctively we know that there's a craft heritage associated with the production of these pieces. Potluck's tea ceremony is another example where traditions are taken as the point of inspiration. And so we start to design around uh, a tradition that has been alive for, for a very long time and offer new surfaces and unique ways to experience so our materials and surfaces feel eclectic. They feel really well crafted, actually. And there's a real nod to bright, bold coloring. It's underpinned by um, a, a strong projection in the stone, um, dark and highly textured. The trend also feels quite surreal. In the handcrafted, it's the idea of, is it an art object or is it a bucket? Um, I think that playfulness really allows us to be quite accessible. And we see elements of this trend becoming quite Afrocentric. Uh, using mosaici carbone and lace, we are sort of juxtaposing different textures and uh, patinations so that when you walk into a space like that, you do feel like you're in a contemporary space, but there's a part of everyone in that. Uh, what's beautiful about uh, this trend is that you can really mix a lot of different Caesar stone swatches, working with texture, with patination, with the relief. So not just visual texture, but the actual texture of the stone. It feels quite Memphis uh, because of the primary yellows, the blues, but that pink, again, bringing that pastel edge that we've seen throughout. Thank you.